uh, we are here basically for this uh, process of constitutional amendment of the 1999 constitution even though so many people have mixed feelings about it even myself uh, we are here just like more or less let's come and perform the rituals uh, the reason because we're calling it performing rituals because I remember six, seven, eight, and now ninth assembly we've been attending public hearing amendment of constitution and then you can visibly can't see any section practically in, 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 in much of it that have been amended in fact let me even tell you that the document I presented in the 8th Senate public hearing for constitutional amendment is the same document I came here with because the whole of that, no one single line on, in the constitution that concerned the people of FCT have been touched or to be amended in any way. So that's why we are here again, but to say, let, well, let's live in this other set of uh, senators, you know, the night assembly, and let's see how far they will go, because it's more or less like a shenanigan. You know, year in, year out, this is going. Some Nigerians are even saying, ah, it's like there's a budget for it, so let's see how we can clear the funds, you know. So, all of this because they should give us reason to believe that this will work, you know. And then, if you look at the whole thing, the whole system, you, you can see number one from the first preamble. I see the first preamble as the greatest deceit ever because the preamble is saying, we Nigeria accept this document as our grand law. No. You know, because there was no time Nigerians gather and agree on that document. And I will give you some instances. In that same document called Nigeria Constitutions of 1999, there is a clause that vested the ownership of the land of FCT to government. So if you say the entire land, 8,000 kilometers square, belongs to federal government, and you are saying the people of FCT actually sat and agreed that their land should be taken away, the answer is no. And so we are saying that close, that section alone is not is not acceptable by us. It was during military that this promulgation was made. General Mutala Mohammed only announced over the radio and said from today in 1976, the entire land of the city has been taken over and has given up to government without any democratization process to engage with our people to even talk about what happened to this because before coming of the fct federal capital territory there was there were people here living in this country. so that's one part ownership of the land should not be taken away forcefully from the people of the fct we see it as daylight robbery that is what we see secondly we have been excluded from the scheme of things now, none of us is represented at Federal Executive Council. That is the highest decision taking body of this country. Mm -hmm. So it means some other so called super Nigerians will go and sit somewhere and take decisions that will now come and enforce it on us. No, let's have an indigent of the FCT as required by the Constitution that the president shall among the Tatsi state and FCT choose one indigent to be a minister. So, what happened to FCT? Nobody. We are not saying the Minister of Estate must be indigent. No, even though that would have been better because the minister you are bringing, he's coming from where? Mostly from the north. They don't know our predicament. They don't know where is Darka. They don't know where is Alumamagi. They don't know where is Maogi. They don't know where is called Galui. They don't even know where is Biashi. So all of these challenges that we have, they are not in tandem. They are not in tune with them. And so we are saying, put one of us there. As if that is not enough, because we are no violent people, we explore all constitutional means to address this. And that's why we went to court in 2017. And in 2018, graciously, because the court is usually the judiciary, is usually the hope of the common man, the last hope, the judiciary gave us judgment on the 15th of February 2018 and directed Mr. President to appoint FCT Indigen as one of the ministers. The judgment is there. They did not appeal and the president have refused to implement. We are just waiting maybe on the on the, the first, on the, the maybe 12, p, 12 a.m. of the 29th of May, 2023. If the president hands over and did not implement this, we will charge him for court contempt. Because in the constitution, the constitution says all organs of government shall implement court judgment. So if you do not implement, that is court contempt. So we are just waiting patiently to see how it goes. If before then he did not implement, who we'll file for court contempt? Because here is a judgment of a court of competent jurisdiction. We petition the National Assembly that the Constitution again have said 
they are our House of Assembly. Can you see this kind of lacuna? That the entire Senate and House of Reps should serve as House of Assembly for the people of FCT. That is a misgiving in the Constitution. That is why I say the letters and the spirit of the Constitution some are not acceptable by Nigerians. And so we want that section also to be amended. We want it to be amended. Let's have our own second tier government where we have legislature, where we have our governor or chief administrator or mayor or whatever you call it. Let it be that we have a semblance of second tier government where we have government for the people, by the people and for the people in the FCT. So all of these are the issues we have actually. You see other Nigerians are saying we want secession. We don't believe in Nigeria. But FCT people are saying include us into the scheme of things. In a very literal ground, if a father have children, three of his children or four, are saying, Baba, I want to go my separate way. I don't like this family again. But you have one particular son who continuously said, Daddy, I believe in you. I believe in oneness, the indivisibility okay, of this country, of this family. I will remain here. I'm not going anywhere. That father ought to love that son more than every of his child. But the case of Nigerians is different. When FCT people say, include us. Let Nigeria be one. Let's do this together. If you are here, we have nowhere to go. They are looking at us with disdain and treating us as if we are third class citizens in our own country. Let me tell you what is happening. The insecurity of this country, nobody should lie and say it's poverty, it's this. No, it's injustice that is causing insecurity. And if they continue in this road of injustice, intimidating, marginalizing, forceful takeover of our land, and then killing our people like Nigerian army is doing in Tunga Maje, Anagada, and uh, Ido Sariki, then it will get to a point where they will never continue to contend with us anymore. But for now, we are law abiding and Nigerians know that we want Nigeria to come together and be one. While others are pulling, we are saying come together. But they don't seem to appreciate what we are doing. But in no distant time, time shall